Hi guys, what we're going to be cooking today is something really special. Salmon on croute. Okay, the first thing that we're going to do, we're going to make a basil sauce. And basically what it is, it's just pesto without the pine nuts. Fresh basil leaves go in, garlic, lid on, and just pulse until smooth. So once the garlic and basil are mixed together, gently add your oil. Once you've added your oil, add in some pecorino cheese, add in some pepper, just a touch of salt, because remember the cheese is salty. In our pulse again, lid off, mm, so taste. Absolutely perfect. And that is what you want right there. Beautiful. So what I've got in this bowl is some cream cheese. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna add the basil sauce or the pesto sauce to the mix. So add in your basil. Now with the spatula, just work it in there. Okay, so now that's all mixed. We're gonna put it in the fridge and chill it for about 15 minutes. Okay, next, finely dice your onion. Next, slice your garlic. So now we're gonna swap off the onions and garlic. So medium pan, medium heat, olive oil, onions. And you just want to lightly sweat these for about five minutes. So next, add in fresh spinach. And this will wilt really fast. And just keep stirring it all the time. Once your spinach is wilted, take it off the heat and put it in a bowl. So now just pour all your spinach into a bowl. Mmm, it smells gorgeous. I let that cool. Look at that beauty. We've got some beautiful salmon for this. Um, and sometimes it'll come with the skin on. So we're gonna take the skin off. Or you can get your butcher to actually do it. So there's the skin, all off. And it's all free, nice. Okay, so now lightly dust your work surface. Okay, I've got my puff pastry and uh, I've bought it. You don't need to make it anymore. Um, just buy them, they're just as good. Fantastic, and I've rolled it out pretty thin, round about that thickness. So first, add some of your spinach. Next, place your salmon on top of the spinach. Next, spread some of that cream cheese with the basil over the top. Once your salmon's covered with the cream cheese, add the rest of your spinach just on top. And lightly cover the pastry with some egg wash. And lightly season, brown black pepper and just lightly season on top of the spinach. Just lightly. So fold the pastry all the way over. And then fold all the way over on the other side, gently. Now at the sides, just press with your hands, gently. Now gently egg wash this side bit. And the other side, now just gently fold. And do that on the other side. Now gently flip it over and put it on a baking sheet. Gonna shape it, and some egg wash lightly over the top. So now very gently cross hatch. So just salt and pepper on top. that beauty. Let that rest for about 10 minutes. Look at that guys, absolutely gorgeous. You've got the cream cheese with the basil, you've got the beautiful cooked salmon, and you've got the spinach on top. Absolutely fantastic. There you have it guys, that's my salmon on croute with roasted potatoes and I did a lemon butter sauce. Absolutely fantastic. So now I'm gonna tuck in. So let's tuck in. Let's have one of these spuds first. That sauce. Mm. Try this beauty. Oh yeah. Mm. My cream cheese. Gorgeous. Give it a go guys. You'll like this one. Thanks guys.
Roast potatoes, I love them. I'm gonna show you how you can make them just a little bit more extra special. Roast potatoes, I love them all year round, but at the holidays, you've got to do them extra special. Duck fat, it takes the spud to a whole new level, trust me. First, place duck fat in a roasting tray. Now peel your potatoes, cut in half, and cut into bite-sized pieces. Put the duck fat in the oven seven to eight minutes to melt. While the fat is melting, add a good pinch of salt to boiling water, add the potatoes and parboil seven to eight minutes. Next, drain the potatoes, add to a bowl and toss well. Look at that, can you see all those fluffy edges? That will make the roast potato nice and crispy. Now take out the hot fat. Followed by a good pinch of salt. and ground black pepper. Now place in the oven at 400 for 40 minutes. After 40 minutes, turn over the potatoes and for extra flavor, add fresh thyme and rosemary. Now put back in the oven at 475, 15 to 20 minutes. You hear how crispy that is on the outside? That's crispy at the top and fluffy inside. Mmm. Mmm. And at the end, add sea salt. So there you have it, the perfect roast potato for any special occasion. So let's tuck into one of these roasties. Mmm, now that is a roast potato. Crispy on the outside, fluffy on the inside, and that duck fat takes them to a whole new level. Give them a go. Thanks, guys. On this edition of Steve's Cooking, I'm going to show you a delicious recipe that you can make for the holidays. Okay, for the stuffing, let's fry some bacon. So I'm just gonna chop it. In a pan, add olive oil. Add the bacon and cook until crispy. When cooked, take out and put to one side. Just slice your onion. Just finely dice your celery, your carrots. In the same pan, add olive oil. Add onions, carrots and celery. And a good pinch of salt. And you just want to cook these vegetables down. Next, add the mushrooms and cook two minutes. Now add that yummy bacon straight in. And then just give that a light stir. Mmm. We're going to be using some pistachio nuts, and these will go fantastic with the stuffing. So add the pistachios to a pestle and mortar, and then just lightly smash them. Add your nuts straight in, add your garlic, some fresh rosemary, goes very well with this stuffing. And just cook that garlic out for a couple of minutes. Add spinach, a little bit of olive oil on top. Now cook the spinach until wilted. Next, cut your bread about an inch thick and cut into cubes. Add the bread to a bowl, followed by the stuffing mixture. Add one egg to a bowl, and then just whisk, add the egg. Next, add stock, and then stir everything well. Cut along the middle of the breast, about three quarters in, and open. 
place plastic on top, using a meat bat or rolling pin, flatten the meat. Add salt and ground black pepper, and the stuffing. Make sure that you really pat that stuffing down and leave a border. Now roll the breast tight. Here, I'm using butcher's twine. This will help the meat stay firm and cook evenly. Next, add olive oil to a baking sheet, add the turkey, followed by salt and ground black pepper. To make the gas streak, add cider vinegar, brown sugar, pomegranate juice, now reduce to about a quarter of a cup. When reduced, add to a bowl. Look at that, it's got a nice glaze. So leave that to cool. When the turkey is cooked, leave to rest. So there you have it, that's one delicious meal for you to make on the holidays. It looks gorgeous, so let's tuck in. Get that stuff in. Mm. I love that gastrique. It's zingy, it's tangy, and it goes fantastic with that turkey. Thanks, guys. Sausage rolls, I love them. And I'm gonna show you my little twist on this party classic. To make the pastry, add plain flour to a food processor, followed by a good pinch of salt, cold butter, lay down and pulse until it looks like fine breadcrumbs. Again, turn the food processor on and add cold water. Can you see that? When it comes together like that, you know it's done. Add a light dust and a flour to your worktop. Add the dough. Now with your hands, bring it all together and knead one minute. Now wrap and place in the fridge for 30 minutes. For the tomato sauce, chop your onion. And just slice your garlic. And just a little bit of chili for some heat. In a pan, add olive oil. Add the onions, garlic and chili. And then just cook everything on a nice gentle heat. Next, add tomato sauce. Just a hint of balsamic vinegar. Now give all that a good stir. Now bring the sauce up to a light boil and simmer 20 to 30 minutes. For the pork mixture, slice one red pepper and onion. Add olive oil to a pan, followed by the onions and peppers. Some brown sugar. and cook 15 to 20 minutes. When cooked, add to a bowl and put to one side. Take out the pastry and leave at room temperature. In a bowl, add ground pork, followed by the ground fennel seeds, garlic powder, a good pinch of salt, ground black pepper, Worcestershire sauce, those caramelized onions and peppers, and mix well. Next, lightly flour your worktop Add the pastry. Now with a rolling pin, roll the pastry out into a big rectangle, about a quarter of an inch thick. Now trim off the sides, add parchment paper to a baking sheet and lightly flour. Add the pastry, 
followed by prosciutto and the meat. Now lightly egg wash the pastry to make it stick, add a pinch of salt and roll. When rolled, add egg wash on top, followed by black and white sesame seeds, now placed in the oven at 375, 30 to 45 minutes. When cooked, take out and leave to rest. And when your sauce is done, add a good handful of basil. Add a pinch of salt. So there you have it, one delicious sausage roll, fit for any party. So let's tuck in. Mm. I absolutely love it. It's a little different to the normal sausage roll. I love that sauce, really goes well. I love the pastry, nice and crispy. Give it a go. Thanks, guys. How you doing, guys? Hope you're well. Do you like my lights? Uh, it's, it's the best I can bloody do. It's, it's festive, uh, I can't find any tinsel, so I thought I'd just put some lights on. It's that time of year, it's Christmas, Merry Christmas. It's my favorite time of the year. Good food, drink, uh, spend time with your family, and I'm gonna do a beautiful side dish. I've done this before, and it's one of my favorites. Garlic, creamy garlic mushrooms. Beautiful button mushrooms. Like I said, I've done this before on my channel, two or three times and it's delicious. And I thought I'd do it again, because I really fancy it. So very simple, I'm gonna be using some veg stock, um, some white wine, some cream, some shallots, plenty of garlic, and some butter and mushrooms. And for this recipe, just try and get the butter mushrooms. These work well for this recipe. Not any fancy mushrooms like wild mushrooms or anything like that. Use the butter mushrooms. Cheapest chip ones, these work the best. It's quite a fast dish. Uh, it's a one pot pan, which I love. And I was taught to make this back in the nineties. I used to work at this restaurant called Hooper's and uh, we made it every day and I haven't stopped making it ever since. And it's, it's simple and it tastes so good. So first what we need to do is finally dice these shallots. I think they work well for this dish, nice and sweet. So get all them in my bowl. So I'm just chopping my garlic. You can use a, a garlic crusher. I just like to do it by hand. So what we're gonna to do to the garlic now is add a bit of salt, and this will help it grind more because we're gonna mince it. Like I said, you can use a garlic crusher. So with the back of the knife, just give it a little mince. So that's nicely minced, so add that to my bowl. So for this, make sure you've got everything ready. So olive oil goes in the pan. So when your pan's hot, add the mushrooms, straight in. You hear that sizzle? That's what you want. Now cook these until they're pretty soft, nice and golden brown. Look at these now, they've been cooking for like five minutes. Uh, mushrooms contain a lot of water, so it's very important to cook out the water. Uh, the sizzle's fading, that means the water's going away. And that's what you want right there. All right, the mushrooms are good, all the water's come out. Um, now your shallots. If I added the shallots at the start, they will burn. Got to really nicely, finely diced. So add your shallots. Right now, cook out for about one minute and make sure you don't burn them. Next, add your garlic and cook out for two to three minutes. It's smelling amazing. Right, turn your heat up and add your white wine. Mm. 
you just want to make sure you cook out all that alcohol. It's smelling amazing. Next, I just stock. Bring this up to a boil and reduce by half. It's, it's, it's smelling amazing. If you love garlic, you're gonna love this. It's, it's garlic heaven, right? So that's reduced by half. So add your cream. Get your cream in. So mix your cream, bring it up to a boil and cook it for two to three minutes. So it slightly thickens. And the great thing about heavy cream, it doesn't split. Single cream does. So you can really bring this up to a boil and get it nice and thick. And to finish, just a little bit of fresh parsley. Wow, that's just a creamy garlic oven right, right there. And my parsley, that looks and smells amazing. I haven't got any um, crusty bread, and this is amazing with crusty bread. It looks beautiful, it, it looks festive. I've put some bull's blood on there, just to give it that pop. Um, if you love garlic, and if you love mushrooms, you're gonna love this, especially garlic. It just smells beautiful. And can you, and can you see what I mean? It's, it's a fast dish, it's fast, so you've gotta be on your game. Um, I'm just gonna tuck in um, good crusty bread. You need some good crusty bread, but I haven't got any bloody crusty bread. So I've just gotta use this, but I'm just gonna tuck in. Oh man, creamy. Mm. Come on. Get my bread in. Oh. Man. Mm. Just make it, you'll, you'll see what I mean. It's absolutely delicious. Anyway, Merry Christmas. Ah, the old dreaded souffle. That light fluffy egg dish that every cook fears. But it's not that bad. I mean, a, a savoury one. You've got more, you've got more leeway. You know, you, they can forgive you. But a, a sweet one, yeah, you've got to be more precise. Uh, more uh, technique involved. But a savoury one, still technique, but it's absolutely delicious. Like I said, a savoury souffle, you can get away with a few things. You can take it a little step further. But a sweet one, yeah, you've got to hold back and, you know, be on, a good, be on your good behaviour. So there's a few little things you've got to remember. And the little things are very important. Eggs, room temperature. It's your egg whites, your folding, your whipping. Got to get that right. Uh, your bechamel, not that bad. But you still got to get that right. And um, your ramekins, you know. How you put the butter in, vertical strokes, that can help it rise. Then you can put your breadcrumbs in or your cheese and that creates like a building block to make the uh, souffle rise as well. There's all these little things you've got to remember. What I'm trying to say is... Cars. Yeah, so um, there's just these little things you've got to remember. Little techniques. And once you've mastered them, it's a breeze. So uh, yeah, I hope you enjoy it. Sit back and relax, uh, slap a like on this video, share, subscribe, do whatever you do. It'll be doing me a favor. <clears throat>
sit back and enjoy. Thanks, guys. To make the batter, first separate the eggs. Also, make sure they're at room temperature. When separated, put the yolks and egg whites to one side. To make the bechamel, add unsalted butter to a pan. When melted, add flour and cook out for two minutes. Add cold milk and whisk until thick. When thick, add nutmeg, Dijon mustard and stir. Stir well and take off the heat. My choice of cheeses are sharp-aged cheddar and grana padano. With the saltiness of the cheddar and the nutty flavour of the padano, they're a match made in heaven for my souffles. Grate the cheeses then add to the bechamel. Now stir until the cheese is melted, but not fully, you still want some texture. Now let cool. Next, stir in the egg yolks one at a time. Season to taste and put the batter to one side. Next, grab your souffle moulds. Coat them using unsalted butter, doing vertical strokes from the bottom to the rim. This will help the souffle rise. Add grated padano. Now rotate the ramekins until the cheese has stuck to the butter. Again, this will help the souffle rise. Now place in the fridge. Next, add egg whites to a mixing bowl, followed by a light pinch of salt. Using a mixer, start at a slow speed for about two minutes, then go faster until stiff peaks. When mixed, transfer the batter to a large bowl. Now fold the egg whites gently into the batter. Pour into ramekins, a grated cheese on top, now place in the oven and cook. Hello guys, thank you for making it to the end of the video. I um, hope you enjoyed the video. As you can see, there's some videos here that you might like related to the video I've just done, or there might not be. But what I want you to do is subscribe, like the video, click that bloody bell. Uh, you'll be doing me a favor. So uh, yeah, and enjoy some videos here. I've got, I've, I've got a few videos up here. So uh, just click on them and uh, enjoy. Thanks guys.
How you doing guys? Hope you're well. Um, Christmas has come early. I've decided I've had enough of uh, 2020. Christmas has come early. I've got my tree, I've got Santa, and I'm ready to rock. Look at that tree, amazing. Nice little festive recipe, this one. Well, it is festive. Well, I'm gonna call it festive. It is, because it's nearly Christmas and it's festive, and that's what I'm gonna do. A caramel, a caramelized onion tart, French, uh, with some nice pizza dough. And you know, you know what? This tree is not doing it. It's it's just not doing it. Hang on a minute. I want to get a tree. That is sh Abigail. Do you want to get a Christmas tree? I'll be back in a minute. Yeah, it's, um, it's a beautiful recipe, um, very simple to make. Um, the star of the show is the dough, got to get that right. And uh, once you've got that right, you're pretty much there. Caramelized onions, don't really need much actually doing. Low heat, little balsamic to help them along. You can add a little bit of sugar if you want to, you don't need to. Just stir them and stir them, stir them. They'll take around about an hour, 50 minutes to an hour, and uh, you're good to go. Mascarpone cheese, goat cheese, absolute classic some time beautiful enjoy now it's christmas thanks guys to make the dough i'd use the lukewarm water and put aside for five minutes Next, add flour to a mixer. Followed by olive oil, salt and pepper, and thyme. Turn on the mixer on a slow setting, now gradually adding the yeast and water. Mix until the dough comes together, and try not to overwork the dough. Transfer to a work surface, lightly flour your hands, and the work surface. Now knead for five minutes. Divide the dough into four equal pieces, Shape the dough into balls and place on a baking sheet. Cover with a damp towel and set aside for about an hour. For the caramelized onions, thinly slice onions, come, 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 
add olive oil to a pan. My induction didn't like my copper pan, so I had to change it. Again, add olive oil, add the onions, followed by salt and pepper. On a low heat, stir the onions from time to time. This stage can take hours. I just did mine for one hour. When the onions are soft, add thyme and balsamic vinegar. Stir well and cook until caramelized. When caramelized, transfer to a bowl and put aside. Next, in a bowl, add mascarpone and goat cheese. Now with a spatula, mix well and put aside. Onions and goat cheese are a classic combination, and that's why they work so well in an onion tart. Next, flabber your work surface and your rolling pin. I rolled mine about three millimeters thick, 12 inches long by six inches wide. Transfer the dough to a floured baking sheet. Add some of the cheese mixture. Followed by onions. And thyme. Lightly drizzle olive oil around the edges. This will make them golden brown and crispy. Now place in the oven and cook. At the end, I like to add some crispy fried onions. They are delicious and add great texture. So there you have it. That's my festive onion tart. So delicious. Thanks, guys. Hello guys, thank you for making it to the end of the video. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. As you can see, there's some videos here that you might like related to the video I've just done, or there might not be. But what I want you to do is subscribe, like the video, click that bloody bell. Uh, you'll be doing me a favor. So uh, yeah, and enjoy some videos here. I've got, I've, I've got a few videos up here. So uh, just click on them and uh, enjoy. Thanks guys. Ah, the holidays. The holidays is coming. It's coming. It's coming, Abigail. Yeah. The holidays are coming. I love Christmas. I love the holidays. I just love everything about it. It's just a nice time. And boy, do we need it. Do we need it. So the dish I'm going to be doing is roasted quail on stuffing. Oh, that's nice. Um, with roasted Brussels, saute Brussels sprouts, uh, saute potatoes, uh, with a tarragon gravy. Beautiful, really, really nice. If you can't get quail, because they're pretty hard to get, uh, a chicken breast will work, um, a nice turkey breast would work, um, a Cornish game hen, that would work really, really nice as well. Cooking quail, it's not an easy bird to cook. Um, it's very small, it's very delicate, you've got to treat it with respect. Uh, the smaller the bird, the higher the heat. If I cook quail on 350, say, it's gonna dry out. You want your oven on really, really high, and I mean high, the highest it can actually go. Mine can only go 500 degrees. So the higher, the better. Gotta cook it really, really quick. Boom. In the pan, brown it, straight in the oven. So like I said, everything's quick. Everything's on a high heat. 
So get your pan really nice and hot, uh, get a bit of butter in there or olive oil, uh, brown it really, really quick and bung it in the oven, 500 degrees or higher, or a pizza oven. A pizza oven's fantastic for quail. Gets it nice and crisp, keeps all that moisture in, and uh, the internal temperature, if you, if you want to know um, the best internal temperature to cook a quail, take it out of the oven, is 150. 150, and then you've got a beautiful, and serve it slightly pink. You can serve it slightly pink. And it's absolutely delicious, cooked right. It hasn't got a gamey taste. It tastes like chicken, but better, miles better. And they are absolutely delicious. So, slap a like on this video, click that bell, and... Uh, Happy holidays, Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, and I hope you uh, enjoy the dish. Thanks, guys. For the gravy, roughly chopped celery, carrots and onion. Add olive oil to a pan. Here, I'm using turkey necks. They make a fantastic base for a gravy. Add to the pan and brown. When brown, transfer to a bowl. In the same pan, add a drizzle of olive oil. Add the vegetables, season, and cook for 10 minutes. After 10 minutes, add smoked paprika for a small hint of smoky goodness and cook out for two minutes. Add turkey necks back to the pan. Followed by stock. Now bring to a boil and reduce by half. For the stuffing, roughly chop onions, celery, carrots, garlic, and mushrooms. Add olive oil to a pan, followed by all the vegetables. Season well and cook the vegetables until soft. Add pistachios and spinach. Also, chestnuts are delicious. Add a drizzle of olive oil just to help it along. Now stir until wilted. At the end, add a sprig of tarragon and stir. Now put to one side and cool. Next, dice bread and add to a bowl, followed by egg, cook vegetables, stock, and mix well. Now transfer everything to a casserole dish, press everything down with a spoon, season, Cover with foil, now place in the oven and cook. When the gravy is reduced by half, take out the necks, strain and put back on the heat. At 
this stage, I needed to thicken my gravy, so I made a slurry, equal parts cornstarch and cold water. At the end, add the slurry and tarragon. This will perfume the gravy nicely. Optional, I use the meat from the turkey necks. This just takes the gravy to another level. Now keep the gravy warm. When the stuffing is done, uncover and put under the broiler to crisp up. For my sides, I did sautéed Brussels sprouts and potatoes. A delicious festive side. Thinly diced sprouts and diced potatoes. Add olive oil to a pan. Add potatoes and cook until golden brown. The sprouts shouldn't take long to cook. At the end, season and keep warm. For my protein, I'll be using quail. But if you can't get quail, chicken thighs, turkey breast or Cornish game hen would work nicely. Season the quails well with salt and pepper. Add to a very hot pan and quickly brown. Now place in the oven and cook. So there you have it, that's my festive quail dish. Absolutely delicious. Thanks guys. Hello guys, thank you for making it to the end of the video. Um, hope you enjoyed the video. As you can see, there's some videos here that you might like related to the video I've just done, or there might not be. But what I want you to do is subscribe, like the video, click that bloody bell. Uh, you'll be doing me a favor. So uh, yeah, and enjoy some videos here. I've got, I've, I've got a few videos up here. So uh, just click on them and uh, enjoy. Thanks guys. From Steve's Cooking to you, have a great Christmas. And I'm going to leave you with my perfect Christmas Day brunch. To make this Christmas Day brunch, add tomatoes to a roasting tray, add a drizzle of olive oil, Add a pinch of salt. Now place in the oven at 350 for 25 minutes. To make the French toast batter, add milk, followed by beaten egg, some ground black pepper, a pinch of salt, thinly sliced green onion, fresh cilantro, jalapeno for some heat, smoked paprika, a touch of cumin, and mix well. Next on a medium heat, add bacon to a grill pan and cook. While the bacon is cooking, add olive oil to a pan, add the egg, followed by a dash of water, lay down and cook to your liking. Next, slice your bread into thick slices. Here, I'm using ciabatta bread. Add the bread to the batter and soak on each side for three minutes.
Add your bread to a non-stick pan and cook on both sides until golden brown. And just look how juicy those roasted tomatoes are. So there you have it, the perfect Christmas Day brunch. I love pressing these tomatoes down. They make their own sauce. Look at that. So let's tuck in. And just look at that. Give this one a go, guys. It's perfect for the Christmas Day brunch. Delicious. Happy Christmas. How are you doing guys? A bit of a festive one this one. I'm going to be doing a roast turkey breast uh, stuffed with garlic, uh, honey smoked um, sweet potatoes and a cranberry onion jam. That's festive and delicious. And, and instead of using a whole bird, just use this turkey breast. Absolutely amazing. Uh, packed full of flavour. It's netted so we don't go anywhere apart from that little bit there. And if I'm just serving a small amount of people, I'll just use this. This will serve around about three to four people, depending on how greedy you are. This is a lifesaver, cheap as chips, and it'll go a long way, like I said, depending on how greedy you are. So what you want to do now is grab a paring knife and just make some holes in the breast randomly, just around. So we're going we're gonna to put some garlic in there. And now just add your garlic in the holes. This is going to be amazing. So add a good pinch of sea salt, get it on there. Some olive oil, get it on there. And now you just want to rub that salt in, all that oil, and you can see the garlic's in. Rub it in there. So what I'm gonna do now is put the turkey breast on the rack, just the oven rack. And what this will do, all the goodness and all the juices will drop onto the roast potatoes, not roast potatoes, sweet potatoes. And I'm gonna put them in here and that turkey juice and all the goodness will drop on to the sweet potatoes and it's gonna be fantastic. So first I'm gonna put the tray in. I'll go on the bottom and now the turkey breast, just on the rack. I can hear that sizzle, nice. So I'm gonna cook this on 325 for about two hours, we'll see. Right, so while that's cooking, we're gonna do the cranberry onion jam, and I'm gonna be using uh, some red onion because it's nice and sweet. So let's thinly slice it. Okay, so add some olive oil to your pan. Right, so now add the onions. Every time you're sweating something, especially onions, add a pinch of salt, it wakes them up. It releases them. So you just wanna cook these onions on a medium heat. Not too crazy, just cook them down. A little bit of sugar just to help them caramelize. So they're nice and soft, it's where I want them. So now I'm gonna add some, some rosemary. I mean cranberries and rosemary are classic. Get that in there. Cook that rosemary out for like two minutes. Right, so now add your cranberries. Mmm, add some stock. Just to cover. Right, so now what you want to do is bring that up to a boil and uh, let the cranberry cook out really nice. A little bit of sugar. I love to know how much sugar and some vinegar. It's a bit like a gas drink. It's got a little bit of tartness, which I like, just in the background, but um, the vinegar and the sugar have really balanced it out and I can really taste that rosemary too. But that's done, that's fantastic. You can add a little bit of orange 
in there if you want to. You can add some clove, uh, some star anise, fantastic. But that for me is just simple, nice, festive, and that'll go very well with the turkey. Okay, so just peel your sweet potato. I used to hate these things, but now I love them. Slice it in half. Chop. All right, so grab your tray. It's hot. All right, grab your sweet potatoes. Add them to that fat. So I add smoked paprika, good pinch of salt, some extra oil. Mix. Right, so now add your spuds. It's gonna be hot. Right, so now that is cooked. Now you wanna let that rest for at least 20 minutes. It's gonna be delicious. I'm gonna show you a delicious combo, and that is Brussels sprouts and uh, nutmeg. Great salad. So the slice your Brussels sprouts. Olive oil, straight in. Now add your sprouts. You want a good pinch of salt. Right now, a little touch of nutmeg over the top. Right, you want to cook that for like a little bit. You still want texture. You don't want it mush. Okay, so take out my sweet potatoes. Should be nearly there. Oh, beautiful. Gorgeous. Look at these, they smell absolutely gorgeous. And they smell nice and smoky too. So now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna glaze them with a little bit of honey. If I added the honey at the start, it would burn them. Uh, so just last five minutes in the oven and it'll give it a nice glaze. It's gonna look gorgeous. So just a little bit of honey, not too much. And the last five minutes, it'll just give it a nice sheen. Spuds back in, five minutes. Now that, my friends, is supper sorted, right there. The start of the show is that jam. As I always say, let's tuck in. So, try some of this turkey, with that little jam on there. So, mm. I'm gonna try some of this honey smoked sweet potato with some Brussels sprouts. Mmm, mmm. Everything just works. And that's me done for 2016. Have a fantastic Christmas, a fantastic new year. Be safe, be merry, eat well, and I will see you in 2017. Thanks guys. I don't know whether to use a knife and fork or just stuff my face. Oh, I can't. That's massive. Oh, it's got a kick. It's got a kick. It's got a good kick. Now that is super sorted. How you doing guys? I hope you're well. I'm excited on this one. Eggs Benedict. I'm going to do it like a little different. Instead of Canadian ham, I'm going to do prosciutto. Um, and the hollandaise. I'm not going to do it traditional. I'm going to do it in a blender. Pretty quick. It's going to be good. So first thing what we need to do is melt the butter. Unsalted butter. So add your butter to the pan. Mm. Right, my butter's melted, nice and warm. You don't have to remove the solids. It's not necessary, and personally, I think there's more flavor right now for the blender. So first, in the blender, add your egg yolks, some white wine vinegar, and what makes the hollandaise shine is the acidity, the white wine vinegar, or the white wine. It just makes it pop, beautiful. So a little touch of salt, just to start it off. Right, I'm going to grab my butter. It's at a nice temperature, lukewarm. It's not red hot. If it was red hot and I put it in there, it's going to scramble the eggs. We don't want that. But if you want a quick hollandaise, I promise you, it's going to work out every time. I'm just going to pour it into a jug so I can pour it in easy. 
Got a nice little spout on there. I'm gonna start off slow and add the butter slowly. Switch the blender on medium. Add the warm butter until it's emulsified. This should take about a minute. Oh yeah, beautiful. How simple and easy was that? Easy. There's a few things that can actually go wrong. Um, if you over blend it, it can go watery. And if it does, you can thicken it up with a little bit of cornstarch, a little bit of potato flakes, egg yolk is good. Um, also, if it gets a little too thick, you can add a little bit of water and that'll loosen it. It won't split, but it'll loosen it. But that is perfect. So at the end, a little bit of lemon juice. A little squeeze of that, not too much. And just for a little bit of kick, a little bit of cayenne. Smoked paprika is good in this as well. Season to taste. We're good to go. To keep the sauce warm, use a bambury. Right, now my hollandaise is nice and warm and that'll keep warm. So what else I'm gonna be using? I'm gonna be using some English muffins, uh, room temperature eggs, I'll talk about that in a minute, and uh, some prosciutto, some beautiful prosciutto. Anytime I'm doing Eggs Benedict, I always choose prosciutto. I just love its fat content. I think it tastes better than Canadian ham. I love its unique saltiness, especially with the eggs and the hollandaise sauce. It's just got a better flavor and I prefer it, but you do you. And when poaching eggs, make sure that your eggs are at room temperature. If they're not, you put them in the water, it's gonna lower the temperature of the water and it's gonna make them cook longer. Very important, room temperature. right now for the poached eggs. First, add white wine vinegar to the water. This keeps the egg white together. Bring to a boil, then simmer. Next, using the slotted spoon, make a whirlpool. Add the eggs in the same direction of the water. Now cook for three to four minutes. When cooked, add to paper towel to remove any excess water. Just gonna tuck in. Oh yes. Mm. It's delicious. Of course it's gonna be delicious. It's eggs Benedict. I did a nice simple side salad, that beautiful poached egg, that prosciutto. I love the saltiness that comes through. Beautiful. Try it in a blender. Try in a blender because it's quick, easy, and delicious. Thanks guys. an absolute beautiful morning. I love this light. It's beautiful light. I'm feeling festive. How are you doing guys? I hope you are too. Um, just a very quick side dish, a quick one. Um, just with vegetables. Festive. That's what I'm thinking. So this is what I'm going to be using. Um, a butternut squash. Um, pears. Great combo with this. Red onion. Rosemary. Mmm. Honey. And white balsamic. Roasted butternut squash. Red onion for a little bit of sweetness and 
I'm using some pears, great combo, uh, Bartlett pears, great for baking. If you can't find Bartlett pears, I mean, these are pretty common, you can really get these. Uh, but if you can't find these, try and get some Concord pears. They're really, really good as well. Uh, but these are strong, strong as an ox, and they, you know, they hold up. So first what we need to do is uh, make a reduction. I've got some white balsamic. Um, if you can't find white balsamic, just use normal balsamic. And we're gonna do a reduction. We're gonna reduce it and reduce it. And what that means is the flavor is gonna intensify, it's gonna get more sweeter, it's gonna get more flavorful, and it's a great finisher. So when you pan, add your balsamic. Then add a sprig of rosemary. That'll create some nice flavor. Right, you wanna bring this up to a boil and you wanna reduce it until it's nice and thick, until it uh, coats the back of a spoon. You, you can smell the rosemary just getting stronger and uh, the, the vinegar just intensifying. It's beautiful, the, the kitchen smells great. So while that's reducing, uh, we're gonna prep the veg. So first top and tail, your squash. Chop your squash in half. Get a really nice sharp knife for this and then just peel. Cut in half and you'll see some seeds, these things. And then just grab a spoon and scrape them out. And you can um, toast these, great toasted, uh, a little bit of salt, a uh, little various spices on them. Great in salads, like I said, great on their own. Really nice. But I'm not gonna use these today, but save them. And I want these to be fairly thick, like little boats. Then add to a bowl. Beautiful. So slice your pear in half. Take out this little stem, like that. Slice in half again. And then just take out this core. And same with the onions. I just want to cut them into chunks. Add everything to a bowl. Your onions, your pears, everything. So to finish off, I'm gonna add a little bit of um, rosemary just over the top. That'll give it some beautiful flavor. Little bit of salt and pepper. Some olive oil. Beautiful, get all that on. Right now, just get in there with your hands. Get all that rosemary on, that salt and pepper, the olive oil, get it all nicely coated. And we'll roast it. Now get all that on your tray. It's smelling amazing and they're not even cooked yet. Give it a little shake. All right, my veg are in. I've got a lot of veg cooking. I've got some veg cooking in the oven. I've got some veg cooking in the toaster oven. So I'm cooking a lot of veg. My reduction's done and it's nice and thick. Come and have a look at this. Look at that. It's reduced down. It smells amazing. Got a nice rosemary taste, vinegary, sweet. That's what you want, a great finisher. You only just want like a little drizzle over there because it can be too much. So be careful, but it's, it's well worth it. So we're gonna put that to one side. I got my pan and uh, I'm gonna toast some almonds. Uh, if you can't find almonds, walnuts are good. I've uh, done this with walnuts and it's just as good, but uh, almonds, I prefer almonds. They're buttery, they're neutral, got a nice texture and beautiful, man. So they're nice and toasted. So we're gonna crush them in a pestle and mortar. And then just lightly crush them. Don't go too crazy. You want these to have texture. You don't want them to be like um, brick crumbs. Right, these should be nearly done. In the last 10 minutes of cooking, I'm just gonna add some honey just over the top. Man, these beautiful festive colors. It smells amazing. Just give that a little shake. I put it back in the oven for about 10 minutes and that's it. Oh yes, yes, yes. Mm.
Right now to finish off that rosemary balsamic reduction. Now this is to your own taste buds. So go easy, easy tiger. Just like a little bit. Put some on, taste it. It's beautiful. Festive heaven. And to finish off, some beautiful toasted almonds just over the top. It's a simple side, but the flavor's up there. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna try one of these pears. Mm. It's a great combo, it really is. And those pears work really well with the onion and the, and the squash. Uh, that rosemary balsamic just, just lifts it, it really does. Um, it's, it's amazing, it's a simple side, like, like I said, it's a simple side, flavours there, easy to do, give it a go this Christmas, or any time. Great with some nice pork tenderloin, uh, some honey ham, great on its own, anything, give it a go, thanks guys. The great thing about making sandwiches is that you can do any flavor combination you want. It might work, it might not, but this one works and it's delicious with turkey. To make this delicious sandwich, chop leek, onion, chili and bacon. Grab a pan, add olive oil, followed by bacon. Now cook for two minutes. Next add leek and onions and cook five to six minutes. Add garlic, chili, garam masala and cook two to three minutes. At the end, add hot sauce, season to taste, and fresh parsley. Stir well and put to one side. For this sandwich, try using a good melting cheese. Here, I'm using Fontina. Also, whole wheat French bread or a bread of your choice. Wrap the sandwich in foil, place in the oven and cook. So there you have it, my holiday delicious sandwich. to do is just put a little bit of hot sauce on there gives it a little bit of a tang try that mm. Mm -mm -mm. lots of bold flavors in this sandwich I love the garam masala that gives it a nice edge it's not too spicy it's great for leftover turkey and that beautiful fontina cheese give it a go guys
now it's time for Christmas And Christmas is my favorite time of year It's beginning to look like all my wishes Are coming true, that's why I cheer I've been busy decking the halls I've been kind to big and small And now it's time to have a merry holiday What a The Everyday Air Fry Oven from Weester Featuring seven preset cooking functions from air fry, toast, bake, roast, broil, defrost, convection broil and grill. Four retro knobs let you conveniently adjust time, temp, cooking function and toast time. Comes in silver or grey, 19 quart or 24 quart. Also comes with a dip tray, oven rack, baking pan, air fry basket and an oven gripper which I think is really handy. Link is below if you're interested. How you doing guys? Hope you're well. The, the holidays are coming. It's, it's that time of year and I, I love it. And Thanksgiving's coming here in America. Uh, this air fryer, I, I like the retro look of it, the retro style. There's no electronics, it's just, it's just dials. Old school, I quite like it, but I want to see how it performs. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to do some uh, leftover, Thanksgiving leftover, uh, turkey, stuffing, dressing. I'm going to make a quiche, a simple quiche. I'm just going to pretend because Thanksgiving's not happened yet. It's in four days, but I've got some, I've made some stuffing. I've made some stuffing, some dressing, and um, I've got some turkey, just store-bought turkey. So we're just going to pretend. Right, so there's my stuffing and it smells amazing. Right, we're going to make uh, short crust pastry. Very, very simple. You don't have to do this. Um, you can go out and get a store-bought pie crust. Nothing wrong with that at all. Uh, but it's going to taste 10 times better if you actually make it yourself. And it, it's simple. I'm going to show you. Right, so what do we need? We need flour. I like to keep, when I'm doing short crust pastry, I like to keep everything cold. So we've got cold flour. Cold unsalted butter and cold water. Right, so first add your flour, straight in. I'm using a food processor, uh, but you can use a bowl by hand. Next add your chilled butter. After that, some salt. Put it on. And now we just wanna blitz this up for about 30 seconds. Right, that's like fine breadcrumbs, so that's good. Now, just add a little bit of water uh, to the mix, because you want it to be like a, a cookie dough consistency. So just add a little bit of cold water, and then we'll, we'll uh, blitz it. Jeez Louise, look at that. Come on, Stevie boy. Right, I'm just gonna have a mix. And blitz, again. Yeah, that's nice. It's like, it just comes together. It's like cookie dough. That's what you want. So add a little bit of flour to your work surface. Take out your dough. Right now, we're just gonna bring this all together for about a minute. That's it. How easy was that? That took literally from start to finish, three minutes, not even that. Let's wrap it. Right, this goes in the fridge for 20, 30 minutes. Very important to let this relax. Right, while that's relaxing, let's make the quiche mix. So first, add your eggs to the bowl. All right, let's grab a whisk. Add my half and half. Right, mix well. Make sure all the eggs are mixed in. Got some turkey that I just want to just roughly chop. Then add all that to my bowl. 
So add your turkey to the mix, get that in, and your stuffing. Mm. Man, it does smell of Thanksgiving. It smells of Christmas, Thanksgiving. Just give that a light mix. Okay, my pastry is relaxed. So I just want a light dust in the flour. Add my dough, add a little bit of flour to my rolling pin and roll it thin. Right, that's where I want it. So now I'm gonna use a, a quiche tin, pie tin. So spray your tin. So carefully just add your dough to the tin or you can use a rolling pin and then just slice a bit off. And then just pat it around to get it all nice and flat. I want to carefully add the foil. I'm just going to use dried beans, but you can use uh, rice. I'm just going to blind bake this. All right, I've got it on the bake preset. I'm going to put it around about 400 degrees for about 10 minutes, 12 minutes. Wow, a little TikTok, very retro, love it. Right now, take off the foil. And we're gonna put it back in the oven for 10 to 15 minutes, just to get it nice and golden brown, lightly golden brown. That smells amazing. Oh, that's so crispy, beautiful. Why not? I'm just gonna add a little bit of um, parsley, fresh parsley to the mix. Get my parsley in. And then just give that a nice mix. And at the end, some cheddar cheese. Get that on. I love eating these little uh, extra flaky bits. Mm. Buttery, you just can't beat it. Let's just go for this quiche. What can I say, it's delicious. Um, it's a great way of using Thanksgiving leftovers if you've got some spare turkey um, stuffing, which you'll probably have spare turkey. Um, bung it in a quiche, make a fresh quiche. It's amazing. You won't be disappointed, I'm telling you. All right, guys, I am done. Um, have a great Thanksgiving and uh, I'll see you next time. Thanks, guys. Arancini rice balls, perfect for the festive season, great for parties. They're crispy on the outside, creamy in the middle, delicious.
to make the Sicilian classic diced celery and onion. Add olive oil to a pan. Add the onions, celery, a good pinch of salt and sweat five to six minutes. After five to six minutes, add the risotto rice and cook three to five minutes. Add the white wine and cook until the liquid is fully absorbed. Next, add a ladle of hot stock to the rice and stir until the liquid is fully absorbed. Repeat this process until the rice is tender but still firm to the bite. It should take around 35 to 40 minutes. After 35 to 40 minutes, add Parmesan cheese, a small amount of butter, lid on and put to one side for two minutes. And then just stir all that creamy goodness. Next, place rice on a baking sheet and leave to cool. Even better, overnight. To make the pesto, add almonds to a pan and toast five to six minutes. After five to six minutes, add to a food processor. Add a good handful of basil, followed by garlic. Lid on and pulse for one minute. After one minute, add olive oil. At the end, add grated Parmesan and stir well. Next, add oil to a pan, about three to four inches. Add mozzarella to the rice and shape into a ball. Then add to the flour, eggs and breadcrumbs. When the oil reaches 350, cook three to four minutes, turning occasionally. When cooked, transfer to paper towels to drain. So there you have it, the perfect festive party snack for all the family to enjoy. Let's get some of this almond pesto. Mmm, and look at that gooey cheese, gorgeous. Give this recipe a go, great for parties, fun to make and delicious. Thanks guys. Hang on, sorting out my tree. It lights up, but the thing won't reach. But, uh, feeling festive. Festive. Anyway, how you doing, guys? Um, I fancy doing like another sandwich, um, a tuna sandwich. Um, it's one of those sandwiches where everything just comes together in your mouth. Beautiful. Um, it's got some back flavors. It's got some front flavors. Um, I'm gonna do like a tarragon mayonnaise. Um, that's in the background. Um, I'm gonna put like a, a festive twist to it. I'm gonna put some cranberries in there for like a sweet festive pop. Um, it surprises you when you bite into it. Ooh, what's that sweetness? Ooh, beautiful. Uh, I'm, I'm going to put some avocado on there, like butter, beautiful. Tomato, very simple. And the star of the show, believe it or not, the star of the show is some grilled bread. It makes the sandwich from there to there. Absolutely fantastic. Check it out. I think you'll like it. Happy holidays. First, add cold water to the eggs. When boiling, take off the heat. Now cover for 15 minutes. For the tarragon mayo, add egg yolks to a food processor, followed by red wine vinegar, Dijon mustard, and a squeeze of lemon juice. Slowly add the oil. When thick, add the oil to a steady stream. Season to taste with salt, lemon juice, and tarragon. Lid on and mix again. Transfer to a bowl and place in the fridge. 
For this recipe, I'll be using albacore tuna. Now, shred the tuna with your hands, dice pickles, followed by mustard, eggs, that yummy mayo, and to give it a festive sweet pop, some cranberries. Stir and season to taste. Now place in the fridge for one hour. Look at that, got to talk me to this. Oh yes. Mmm. Mmm. It's so good. Mmm. Wow. Hi guys, what we're going to be cooking today is something really special, salmon on croute. Okay, the first thing that we're going to do, we're going to make a basil sauce. And basically what it is, it's just pesto without the pine nuts. Fresh basil leaves go in, garlic lid on and just pulse until smooth. So once the garlic and basil are mixed together, gently add your oil. Once you've added your oil, add in some pecorino cheese, add in some pepper, just a touch of salt, because remember the cheese is salty. Okay, now pulse again, lid off. Mm, so taste, absolutely perfect. And that is what you want right there. Beautiful. So what I've got in this bowl is some cream cheese. And what we're going to do, we're going to add the basil sauce or the pesto sauce to the mix. So add in your basil. Now with the spatula, just work it in there. Okay, so now that's all mixed, we're going to put it in the fridge and chill it for about 15 minutes. Okay, next, finely dice your onion. Next, slice your garlic. So now we're going to swap off the onions and garlic. So medium pan, medium heat, olive oil, onions. And you just want to lightly sweat these for about five minutes. So next, add in fresh spinach. And this will wilt really fast. And just keep stirring it all the time. Once your spinach is wilted, take it off the heat and put it in a bowl. So now just pour all your spinach into a bowl. Mmm, smells gorgeous. I let that cool. Look at that beauty. I've got some beautiful salmon for this. Um, and sometimes it'll come with a skin on. So we're gonna take the skin off. Or you can get your butcher to actually do it. So there's the skin, all off. And it's all free, nice. Okay, so now lightly dust your work surface. Okay, I've got my puff pastry and uh, I've bought it. You don't need to make it anymore. Um, just buy them, they're just as good, fantastic. And I've rolled it out pretty thin, around about that thickness. So first, add some of your spinach. Next, place your salmon on top of the spinach. Next, spread some of that cream cheese with the basil over the top. Once your salmon's covered with the cream cheese, add the rest of your spinach just on top. And lightly cover the pastry with some egg wash. And lightly season, brown black pepper. And just lightly season on top of the spinach, just lightly. So fold the pastry all the way over, and fold all the way over on the other side. 
gently. Now the sides, just press with your hands gently. Now gently egg wash this side bit and the other side. Now just gently fold and do that on the other side. Now gently flip it over and put it on a baking sheet. Now just shape it and some egg wash lightly over the top. So now very gently cross hatch. So just salt and pepper on top. Now look at that beauty. Let that rest for about 10 minutes. Look at that guys, absolutely gorgeous. You've got the cream cheese with the basil, you've got the beautiful cooked salmon, and you've got the spinach on top. Absolutely fantastic. So there you have it guys, that's my salmon on croute with roasted potatoes, and I did a lemon butter sauce. Absolutely fantastic. So now, I'm gonna tuck in. So let's tuck in, let's have one of these spuds first. Look at that sauce. Mm. Try this beauty. Oh yeah. Mm. My cream cheese. Mm. It's gorgeous. Give it a go guys. You'll like this one. Thanks, guys. Roast potatoes. I love them. I'm going to show.